The body will take immediate action whenever there is damage to the endothelial lining of a blood vessel. Remember that the endothelium is the inner lining of a blood vessel that normally separates the intravascular content from the extravascular space outside of the blood vessel. Now imagine if there was trauma to the blood vessel that caused damage to the endothelium. This could potentially cause blood to leak out into the extravascular space where it doesn't belong, and the body does not like this. So the body will work to form a clot over that damaged area of the blood vessel to prevent further bleeding from occurring. And this process is called hemostasis. Now there are two phases to hemostasis. The primary phase involves forming a primary plug using platelets. This is a quick way for the body to form a clot after injury to a blood vessel. The secondary phase involves the coagulation cascade. This will further solidify and strengthen that initial primary platelet plug that is made. Today we are gonna to focus on primary hemostasis, which is the formation of a platelet plug. As mentioned before, primary hemostasis involves forming an initial clot using platelets. And we're gonna walk through this step by step. So we've got a blood vessel here. Let's say that there's injury to that blood vessel, to that endothelial lining of that blood vessel. Look at what this does. This now exposes the subendothelial collagen that's normally hidden. Now it's exposed to that intravascular space. So the first thing that actually occurs before the formation of a primary platelet plug is what's called vasospasm. The blood vessels will want to naturally constrict and contract to limit some of that bleeding that's occurring. So the damaged endothelial cells release a chemical peptide called endothelin. Endothelin is a potent vasoconstrictor, and it goes and binds to the vascular smooth muscle and leads to contraction. Well, this vascular smooth muscle contraction leads to vasoconstriction, and that's going to help reduce some of that bleeding that's happening. The other thing that normal healthy endothelial cells do is they release hormones called nitric oxide and prostacyclin. These hormones normally relax the blood vessel and they inactivate platelets from binding to the inner lining of a blood vessel. So look what happens. Platelets are able to travel through that intravascular space without getting caught up. And that's what we normally want in a healthy blood vessel. We don't want the platelets to clot off or thrombose the blood vessel because that will lead to problems. Well, look what we did over that injured site. We have collagen exposed there. We don't have endothelial cells there. And if we don't have endothelial cells there, then we're not gonna have the release of nitric oxide or prostacyclin. So as platelets travel over that injured site, they're gonna be more inclined to bind to that collagen. And we're gonna talk about how they do that here in a second. But remember we also said nitric oxide and prostacyclin also serve to relax that blood vessel. So if we don't have nitric oxide and prostacyclin over the injured site, that's gonna to lead to vasoconstriction and that's gonna help reduce some of the bleeding. So this was called vasospasm. The next thing that occurs is the formation of a platelet plug, and this occurs in three steps, platelet adhesion, activation, aggregation. Now, when I was first learning these, they all start with A. They can be confusing at first. It's really frustrating. So I've got an easy way for you to remember this if you're ever tested on the order of events that occur to form a platelet plug. Simply go from the shortest to the longest word, adhesion, activation, aggregation. Now I will say once the ball gets rolling, all three of these will happen simultaneously, but for purposes of initial steps, remember this order. Let's now walk through each of these step by step, starting with platelet adhesion. Damaged endothelial cells will release a glycoprotein called von Willebrand factor. After there is injury to a blood vessel, the von Willebrand factor will bind to the exposed collagen. And this becomes important because platelets express receptors on them that will bind to von Willebrand factor as they pass the injured site and this platelet receptor is called glycoprotein 1B. This process is called platelet adhesion. Now let's talk about platelet activation. This interaction between von Willebrand factor and glycoprotein 1B will activate the platelets to release their content into the intravascular space. Some of this content, including ADP and thromboxane, will bind to other platelets and activate them to recruit them to the site of injury. Thromboxane, in addition to serotonin, also serve as vasoconstrictors. They will bind to the vascular smooth muscle and allow for contraction to occur. And remember, this vasoconstriction helps slow down some of that bleeding from occurring as well. Coagulation factors are also released during platelet activation, and this will be important during secondary hemostasis and the coagulation cascade. VEGF is also released, and this helps promote angiogenesis. 
So we can see platelet activation has multiple roles in vasoconstriction and recruiting other platelets to the site of injury. But now these platelets are starting to clump together, but they have to aggregate somehow. They have to bind to each other somehow. And this is where platelet aggregation comes into play. Not only do the platelets change form and shape during platelet activation, but they also express a glycoprotein 2B3A receptor. And this receptor binds a glycoprotein called fibrinogen that serves to cross-link the platelets together to further solidify and strengthen that platelet plug. And this is called platelet aggregation. All right, let's go ahead and recap all of this and really bring it together. So we get damage to an area of a blood vessel, and what this does is it exposes the subendothelial collagen that's not normally exposed. The damaged endothelial cells will release von Willebrand factor, which will bind to the collagen. Platelets will then bind to that von Willebrand factor through their glycoprotein 1B receptors, and this is called platelet adhesion. That interaction between von Willebrand factor and glycoprotein 1B receptors on platelets will lead to platelet activation and degranulation of the platelet's contents. Some of this content includes ADP and thromboxane, which will activate other platelets and recruit them to the site of injury. And this is called platelet activation, the release and degranulation of those contents, recruiting other platelets to the site of injury. Well, now the platelets need to stick together and aggregate together. So activated platelets also express a receptor called glycoprotein 2B3A, and this will bind fibrinogen that will cross-link the platelets together and further solidify that clot, and that is called platelet aggregation. The coagulation cascade, which is secondary hemostasis, will be involved in forming a mesh-like structure over this platelet plug, and that will be discussed in future videos. The last thing I want to talk about are a couple antiplatelet medications, and that's clopidogrel and aspirin. Clopidogrel will inhibit the function of ADP, and aspirin will inhibit the formation of thromboxane. Remember that ADP and thromboxane were involved in binding to other platelets to activate them and recruit them to the site of injury to then lead to platelet aggregation. So you can see how they serve as good antiplatelets because they prevent platelet aggregation from occurring, and that's why they're good medications to use during a heart attack. 